Let's say you have been requested to compile a COBOL DB2 program, but being a new team member, you don't know how to compile a COBOL DB2 program or what are the steps which is involved in compiling a COBOL DB2 program. So in this session, we will look at what are the different steps which is involved in compiling a COBOL DB2 program and we'll try to understand the underlying concept of a COBOL DB2 program compilation process. So ladies and gentlemen, once again, welcome back to today's session on COBOL DB2 compilation process. We'll start today's session with introduction to COBOL DB2 program. Then we will deep dive into COBOL DB2 compilation process where we'll look at DB2 precompiler and DB2 statement coprocessor. We will also look at a detailed flow diagram which includes step-by-step -step explanation of the entire process. And finally, we will end this session with a couple of programming tips which is required when you write a COBOL DB2 program. So ladies and gentlemen, before I start with today's presentation, I would request you all to do subscribe to our channel because we need your support to grow our channel. And in case if you have already subscribed to our channel, then I would like to say a big thank you for your subscription. So let's get started with introduction. So the first question is, what is a COBOL DB2 program? In layman term, a COBOL program that reads or write data to a DB2 database with the help of an SQL statement is known as COBOL DB2 program. Now let's try to understand why you need a special treatment when you're compiling a COBOL DB2 program. So as you know that COBOL DB2 applications use SQL statement to perform various data manipulation operation and SQL statements cannot be processed by host language compiler such as COBOL, C++, Java. So to process the SQL statements that you have used in the COBOL program, you can use either the DB2 precompiler or an SQL statement coprocessor that is provided with a compiler. Now let's move on to the next section where we look at the function which is performed by a DB2 precompiler or an SQL statement coprocessor. DB2 precompiler and SQL statement coprocessor perform two important functions. First one is replace the SQL statement in your program with calls to DB2 language interface module. And second important function is create a database request module that is DBRM which communicate your SQL request to DB2 during the bind process. Now let me articulate all the information that we discussed till now into a simple flow diagram so that you can understand the underlying concept of COBOL DB2 compilation process. So here's a complete flow diagram of COBOL DB2 compilation process. So on top you have a source code which is actually a COBOL DB2 program that includes SQL statement. And when this source code is processed by a DB2 precompiler, it generates two output. First one is a modified source code and the second one is database request module. So a modified source code does not have any actual SQL statements because they have been replaced by a DB2 precompiler with equivalent calls to DB2 language interface module. Now this modified source code is compiled like a normal COBOL program and to generate a load module you need to perform two important steps. First one is compile and second one is link edit the modified source code that is generated by a DB2 precompiler. Now let's focus on DBRMs that is database request module which is the output of DB2 precompiler. So the DBRMs will be feed into the DB2 bind process and the bind process will convert all the SQL statement which is present in DBRM into a executable runtime instruction. To convert SQL statements into a runtime executable instruction, the bind process perform three important function. First, it verify that you are authorized to do a bind. Second, it will validate your SQL statement syntax. And the third step is optimization. During this step, DB2 optimizer will turn your SQL statement into an executable code. 
So before we move to the next section, I would like to highlight one important point in regards to DBRM. So the DBRM is always kept as a member of a partition data set and is given the name of the program. It also include a consistency token to distinguish it from other DBRMs which is derived from the other version of the program. And there are two different ways of binding a program. First one is to a package and second one is directly into an application plan. And that depends on the project because every project has their own guidelines whether they want to bind the, uh, the program into a package or directly into an application plan. So my recommendation would be to follow the project guidelines because that is something which is designed based on the experience and based on the standards which is followed in your project. Now let's move on to the next section where we'll look at DB2 SQL statement coprocessor and see how it is different from DB2 pre-compiler although the process is somewhat similar. So if you look at the diagram, you can easily make out the difference between a DB2 pre-compiler and DB2 SQL statement coprocessor. When you use DB2 coprocessor, the compiler automatically handles your source code that contains embedded SQL statements. So you don't need a separate pre-compile step. And to use the DB2 coprocessor, you need to specify the SQL compiler option. When the compiler encounters the SQL statement in the source program, it interface with the DB2 coprocessor and the complete SQL statement between exec SQL and end SQL statement is passed to the coprocessor. The coprocessor take appropriate action for that SQL statement and indicate compiler to generate native COBOL statement corresponding to that SQL statement. And the remaining process of generating a load module and binding DBRMs into a plan or a package will remain the same. Now you know the difference between a DB2 pre-compiler and a DB2 SQL statement coprocessor. So it is recommended that you should use DB2 coprocessor instead of DB2 pre-compiler. Now let's look at a couple of important programming tips uh, that you should always keep in your mind when you're writing a COBOL DB2 program. Tip number one. Test your SQL statement before you include them in your COBOL DB2 program. You can use either Spoofy or QMF to test your SQL statements. Number two, you should always determine how you are going to bind the DBRMs. Either you will bind them into a package or you will bind them directly into a plan. Tip number three, you should determine when your application should acquire locks on the resources or on an object. So ladies and gentlemen, this marks an end to our today's session and I would request you all to do subscribe to our channel because we need your support to grow our channel. If you like this video, then do share it with your friends and in case if you have any question or feedback, then please do mention in the comment section. I am going to respond back after this presentation. And please don't forget to hit like button. Thank you so much.